Senior correspondent John Miller, former FBI deputy director, is also following the investigation. John, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Tell me more about what we know about the guns. Well, the guns are emerging to be very interesting. There was the Bushmaster weapon he used to do all of the killing on the scene. What it shows is that he carefully selected uh, the tools for the job he had in mind in this terrible, terrible way. The, um, the other gun that we learned about yesterday was a Glock 10 millimeter. That's a very unusual gun. It costs about $600. It weighs about 28 ounces. It fires 16 rounds. But the 10 millimeter is an extraordinarily large shell for a for a handgun, and the stated purpose of this weapon, since it's almost impractical um, as a kind of personal defense weapon because of its size and recoil, is um, a handgun for hunting large game. It's issued to rangers in Greenland in case they encounter a polar bear. This was the gun that he saved to kill himself, because I think when in his plan it seems if he encountered police, part of his maintaining control over the action was he would eliminate himself before they did, and he apparently selected the weapon that would do it with one step. Suggesting he thought about this carefully. A lot. The other, the other element here is the hundreds of unspent rounds that were recovered. This shows he probably sought out to order and purchase, probably online, we'll learn this in the coming days, um, numerous additional magazines for the weapons he intended to use on children, and that had he not encountered police that early on, and it appears he probably didn't expect to, that with all of that additional ammo loaded into magazines that he intended to keep going through that school, it is hard to imagine something this bad could have been worse. More information might be coming from the computer hard drive. He damaged the computers, he broke the hard drives. The FBI uh, computer uh, lab is supposed to try and put those back together and see what they can extract. They've had some very good experience getting information out of damaged hard drives before, though. And that may be telling in terms of his planning, his documents, including what he may have purchased online. And why is the Postal Department involved in this? That's very interesting, Charlie. We have seen in the Aurora case, before that in the Virginia Tech case, these guys tend to write up or record some communique that explains the why and send those out somewhere. And in this case, they're looking in mailboxes and at the post office for anything with his return address to say, is there something that he sent right before this incident that we can intercept and look at that as evidence? Thank you, John.